Edward. Silly Emma, the water goes right in their front doors. How do you know? Well, as a matter of fact, we both know. Don't we, Alexandra? The, the mole, mole had been, been working, working very hard. hard. It's all to do with the river. And a certain mole, and rat, and Mr. Badger. Alexandra and Mr. Toad. You must imagine what you can't see. And that there are voices to hear if only you let them speak. That's right. You see, darlings, you must listen to the river. It's just the same as ever it was and as it always will be. Always changing and always the same. The mole had been working very hard all the morning spring cleaning his little home, first with brooms, then with dusters, then on ladders and steps and chairs with a pail of whitewash, till he had dust in his throat and eyes and splashes of whitewash all over his black fur. Bother! Spring was moving in the air above and in the earth below and around him, penetrating even his dark and lowly little house with its spirit of longing. It was small wonder then that suddenly... Oh! Oh, blow. And spring cleaning. <laughs> Up we go. Up we go. Private road. Onion sauce. Onion sauce. Clear the way. <laughs> Did you see that? Absolute cheek. Well, I never. Like to come over? All very well to talk. Step lively. Boats, all with boats. 
<laughs> Boats! In or out of them, it doesn't matter. That's the charm of it. Whether you get away, whether you don't, or whether you arrive at your destination or somewhere else, or whether you never get anywhere at all, you're always busy. Nothing in particular. And when you've done it, there's always something else to do. And you can do it if you like. But you'd much better not. Shove that under your feet. A cold chicken, cold tongue, cold ham, cold beef, pickled gherkin, salad, french rolls, cress sandwiches, potted meat, ginger beer, lemonade, soda water. <laughs> Stop too much. Only what I always take on these little excursions. So, this is a river. The river. And you live by it? By it, and with it, and on it, and in it. It's my world, and I don't want any other. What it hasn't got is not worth having. Winter, summer, spring, autumn. Lord, the fun we have together. Just you and the river. No one else. No one else? The bank's far too crowded nowadays. And everyone's always wanting you to do something as what, if... What's over there? That is the wild wood. We riverbankers don't go there much. But aren't the people there... Very nice. Oh, squirrels, all right. Rabbits, some of them. And there's dear old Badger. Wouldn't live anywhere else if you paid him. There are others, you see. Weasels, stoats, foxes. All right in a way, but you can't really trust them. Oh, and, and, and beyond the wild wood... Lies the wide world. I'm never going there, and nor will you, if you've got any sense. Don't ever refer to it again. Portly to swim. <laughs> Picnic? Why didn't you invite me, Ratty? Greedy beggar. Uh, an impromptu affair. By the way, my friend Mr. Mole. Proud, I'm sure. Such a rumpus on the river today. Came here for some quiet and stumbled on you fellows. Beg pardon. I, I, I didn't mean them. Um... Hello? Badger. Phew. My dear old fellow. Do come and. Uh... <clears throat> oh dear. But that's just his way. We shan't be seeing any more of him today. Well then, who's out on the river? The great man, for one. <laughs> Boat, clothes, everything brand new. <laughs> ha! First it was sailing, then it was punting, then it was houseboating. Always the same. Whatever Toad takes up, he soon gets tired of it and starts on something fresh. <laughs> Ahoy there! Toad! Company! No, wretched oars. <laughs> oh, yes. Look, old man, perhaps it's time we packed up too, hmm? About rowing back, Ratty. Do you think that I might take... My dear fellow, I rather think not. I think I'd be rather good at it, you know, being rather a practical fellow and good with my paws. I'm very quick on the uptake. It can't be as difficult as all that. Learn a thing by now, doing a thing. see here. First you must learn the theory. Oh, hang the beastly theory. I want to go. Sit down. Let go. Let oh. go, I say. No. no sit I'm down. determined I shall. And I'm Let determined go. you shall not. Don't be oh. so obstinate. Don't be such a fool. Oh. Ah! Whatever can I say? There's absolutely no need. Oh, but there is. When I think... Come now. Just think I might have lost your beautiful picnic basket. I'm so sorry. You've been so good and generous and I've been so stupid and ungrateful. 
Can you forgive me? My dear chap, water under the bridge. <laughs> I say, that's quite funny. <laughs> <laughs> Look here. You'd better stop here with me for a while. Teach you to row and swim. Gain a um, experience of the river. And so it was agreed. And straight away, the contrite mole was eager to learn from his wise new friend not only about the perils and dangers of the river and its weirs and its sudden floods, but also about its joys. Night fishing with otter, excursions far afield with badger, these things and so much more, until the glowing tiredness of the long day finally overcame him and it was time for him to lay his happy head on the pillow, knowing his other new friend, the river, was lapping close to his window. And as summer ripened and he mastered the skills and learned the delights of running water, he caught something of what the wind was whispering so constantly in the reeds. Toad must be a very nice animal. The best of animals. So simple, so good-natured, so affectionate. Not very clever, perhaps. And it may be that he's both boastful and conceited. But uh, he's got some great qualities as Toady. He's rather rich, you know. And his house really is one of the nicest in these parts, though we never admit it to him. A banqueting hall. I wonder what he's taken up instead. We'll know soon enough. Toady! What's <laughs> new? Hooray! Splendid! Toady, this is my friend Mole. Moley, this is the famous Toad. How do you do, <laughs> Mole? Well, it's a delightful residence. Oh, how kind of you. Oh, absolutely. Oh, it's the finest house on the whole river. <laughs> <laughs> it's only my way, you know. Now, look here. I was just going to send a boat for you, Ratty. Um, yes. With strict orders to come at once, no matter what you were doing. Come along. Oh, you don't know how lucky it is you're turning up just now. You've got to help me. If it's about your rowing. Oh, poo! Boating? Ah, sheer waste of time. Gave that up long ago. No, I've discovered the real thing. And I propose to devote the rest of my life to it. There. Oh, there's real life for you. Oh. Oh, the open road, the dusty highway, the heath, the common, the rolling hills, villages, towns, cities, here today, somewhere else tomorrow. Travel, change, excitement, a horizon that's always changing. And mind, this is the finest of its kind ever built. All the fittings planned by myself. Come on, Ratty. You see? Oh, All complete. My. Everything you could possibly want. Oh, Nothing whatever has been forgotten, you'll find, when we make our start oh, this afternoon. I beg your pardon? We start this, this afternoon. afternoon? Now, you dear good old ratty, don't talk in that sniffy way. You've got to come. I can't manage without you. But you surely don't mean to stick to your fussy old river all your life. Uh, I want to show you the world. Stop, will you? <laughs> Wait for I me. don't care. Ow. I'm not going. And that's flat. And I am going to stick to my old river and live in a hole and boat, as I've always done. And what's more, you're going to stick to me and do as I do, aren't you, Mole? Well, I... Uh, uh... Oh, the joy of the open road. No cares, no worries. Live for others. That's my motto in life. Hey, I say, Ratty, take some refreshment, do. I'll always stick to you, Rat. What you say is to be has got to be. Live for others. That's my motto in life. <laughs> <laughs> Talk about your old river. This is the real life of... A gentleman. I don't talk about my river. You know I don't. But I think about it. I think about it all the time. <laughs> Just clear everything up, you good fellow. Ratty, 
Shall we run away tomorrow morning very early and go back to our dear old hole on the river? No, no, we, we'll see it out. He wouldn't be safe left to himself. But thanks awfully. Open road. It won't take long. His fads never do. Good night, Molly. Good night, Ratty. You fit the oars, give a flick of the wrist, and away you skim. And so, of course, my dear Ratty, I continued by stating my long-held philosophy that... Uh, precisely. And what did you say to her? Ever onwards and upwards, I said. Mm. Progress, I said. Ever forwards and faster. Mm. Onwards. Mm. And upwards. And forwards. And faster! <laughs> to travel. Oh, bless! Oh, poop, poop. <laughs> oh, my. Oh, my. Oh, stop being an ass, Toad. I think I never knew. All those wasted years. I never even dreamt. Oh. But now, oh, what dust clouds shall spring up behind me as I speed on my reckless way. What carts I shall fling carelessly into the ditch. Horrid little carts. Common carts. Canary-coloured carts. What are we to do with him? Nothing. Poop. And poop. Oh. But he's not safe there. Suppose another... Bother, Toad. I've done with him. Catch me going on any more jaunts with that provoking... <coughs> you see, quite hopeless. How about this, Molly? It's called Duck's Ditty. All along the backwater, through the rushes tall, ducks are a-dabbing up tails all. Everyone for what he likes, we like to be. Heads down, tails up, dabbing free. High in the blue above, swift swirl and call. We are down a-dabbing up tails all. <laughs> I don't think much of that, Rat. <laughs> Nor do they. They say, why can't we do what we like, when we like and as we like, without having poetry made up about us? They say, what a nonsense it all is. And so it is, too. <laughs> no, it isn't. There was always a restlessness in the countryside at this time of year. Ratty himself was feeling restless. Why all this craving for change? The swallows spoke, the stirring within them, their sweet unrest. Of course the day would come when they would be homesick again for lush meadows and insect-haunted ponds. But now they must answer the call of the South. The South! They yearned for the passionate touch of the southern sun, for one waft of the South's authentic odor, their blood, they said, was dancing to a music he could not understand. But they were wrong. He too felt uncontrollable longings stirring within himself to travel far and wide. A voyage on a small trading vessel, perhaps, from Constantinople to the islands of Greece and then to the Adriatic Sea, whose shores swam in an atmosphere of amber, rose and aquamarine. In his mind's eye, he saw himself in and out of harbour all the time, sleeping through the heat of the day in some cool temple, and then after sundown, feasting under great stars set in a velvet sky. In Venice, it might be, with friends, with the air full of music, lights flashing and shimmering on swaying gondolas, or then, by different ships, to Sicily, Sardinia, Corsica, and alas, you where the wine casks were dropped overboard, tied to one another in a long bobbing line, like a mile of porpoises, 
where he, Ratty, that oarsman without equal, would be one of the singing boat crew that towed them towards the little town where the great olive woods began, as did rest and refreshment with friends in the south. Hello, Ratty. Been far? South. Ah, south. Is, is everything all right, Ratty? Way, hey, blow the mountain down. Hey, so, coming on board. So, sh- ship's got to Ratty, go. where are you off to? Why, with the rest of them. Seawards first and then on shipboard. To the shores that are calling me. Mm. Oh! Oh! No. Oh! Oh! oh. No. Come on, old friend. A phantom song peeling high between vaporous grey wave-lapped walls. I can't explain, Moly. Sea voices, magic, haunting. No, I, I can't explain. But I'd have gone after them. Gone and left you. Nonsense. <laughs> Leave at this time of the year. Why, the apples are almost rosy enough to pick. There's our jams and pickles to make and the nuts to gather. And remember how you said you loved watching the harvest being brought home and the haystacks growing higher and higher and how you'd take me to see Mr Badger? You wouldn't miss the poetry of all that, would you, Ratty? There was a poetry, too, about wintertime when it came, when the pageant of summer flowers had long shriveled. Ever since that first brief encounter long ago in the spring, Mole had yearned to meet again that imposing animal who lived in the heart of the wild wood. Perhaps now, when nature had kicked off her clothes and the wood seemed closer than ever to the river bank, it was time to venture out and make the acquaintance of the elusive badger. Going for a stroll? Run into badger, maybe? It won't be long. Moly? Moly? I say, old chap, what rhymes with... Moly? 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 I say... Strange. That sounded like... My word. The wild wood. Oh, Moly. Moly! My dear old friend. Oh, Molly. Oh, Molly. 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 Mo. Molly, where are you, Mo?
That's their game, is it? So frightened you can't think. You really shouldn't have gone and done it, Mole. I did my best to keep you from it. If we river bankers have to come here, we come in pairs. We know things you don't yet. Passwords, signs. Without them, if you're small, you'll find yourself in trouble. If you were Badger or Otter, it'd be quite another matter. Well, surely brave Mr. Toad. Toad? <laughs> Wouldn't show his face here alone for a fortune. Now, we must make a start. Can't spend the night here. Ooh. I'm dreadfully sorry, Ratty, but I'm dead Ooh. beat. If I don't rest a while and get my strength back, I'll... All right, all right. Rest away. Anyhow, there should be a bit of a moon later to help us find our way. Time to be off. I'll just see if everything's quiet. Hello? What's up? Snow's up. Or rather, down. Oh. What shall we do? Well, we must take a chance, I suppose. The worst of it is, I don't know where we are. Everything looks so different. shelter and have a rest. Something may turn up. Oh! Oh! Oh, my poor leg! Oh, my! I must have tripped on a branch. Poor old Moly. Not having much luck, are you? It's a very clean cut. It wasn't a branch you tripped on. Sharp edge of something metal, more like. It hurts just the same. Whatever done it. Whatever did it! Yes! Oh, come on, Rat. Hooray! 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 Guess what? What? A door scraper! A door scraper? Huh. Why dance jigs about it? Don't old... you see what it means, you dull-witted animal? Yes. Some very careless person has left it where it's sure to trip everybody up. I should go and complain. Stop to... arguing and help me. There. What did I tell you? You told me nothing whatever. Go on, dance another jig. You found another piece of litter. Well, I hope you're happy. Can we eat it, sleep under it, sit on it and sledge home on it? You exasperating rodent. Doesn't that doormat tell you anything? Doormats tell one nothing. Doormats know their place. Thick-headed beast. <laughs> Rat, you're a wonder. That's what you are, a real wonder. Argued it out step by step, looked at my shin, and door scraper, your majestic mind told you. And you found the very door scraper that done it. Did it? Quite. Did it stop there? It did not. Let me only find a doormat, says your intellect, and you found one. Now for the door, you said, and there is the door. Well, you're wasted here among us fellows. If only I had your head right. But as you haven't, I suppose you're going to sit there and talk all night. Yes, oh, oh, oh. <clears throat> now, the, the very next time this happens, I should be exceedingly angry. Who is it this time disturbing people on such a night? 
Speak up. Oh, Badger, it's me, Rat, and my friend Mole. We've lost our way in the snow. Please let us in. Why, Ratty, me dear little man. C come along in. You must be perished, both of you. Well, I never. Lost in the wild wood and in the snow. And at this time... Old Mr. Badger, gruff and alarming as he appeared on first acquaintance, was in fact the kindliest and most welcoming of animals. Although he almost never went in search of society, he was always at home to his friends. Whatever their needs, and for as long as they required to stay, his visitors could expect not only comfortable lodgings, but also all the pleasures of a well-loaded table. All he ever wanted in return was the latest news from the river bank. Every week a new motor car, bigger and shinier, and more expensive, yeah. and more powerful, with which to terrorise the neighbourhood. And everyone ends in disaster. His coach house is piled to the roof with wrecked machinery. He persists in the belief that he's a heaven-born driver. No respect for the law. <laughs> No, oh, it's disgraceful. And rich as he is, if he goes on like this, he'll finish up bankrupt. Oh, much, much worse. Oh, my. <laughs> so, Badger, I think his friends ought to rally round and make him see sense. Now, now, look here. You know, of course, that I can't do anything now. But once the year has turned and the nights are shorter and one wants to be up and doing by sunrise, you know, well, then, the three of us... We'll take Toad seriously in hand. Stand no nonsense, bring him back to reason. By force, if need be. We'll make him sensible. Right you are, Badger. We'll convert the poor, unhappy animal. He'll be the most converted Toad that ever was before we've done with him. I fancy you know something about the creatures of the wild wood. Eh? I do indeed, Mr. Badger. <laughs> They're not so bad, really. Live and let live. You'll have no further trouble. Come along, Mel. Don't fret, Reddy. I'll show you my boat hold shortcut to the edge of the water. Ratty, hold on, come back. We can't stop now, Mel. Ratty, I want you quick. It's close by here. Whatever it is, we'll come back for it tomorrow. Come now, be a good fellow. It's getting even worse. And I'm not sure of the way. And I need your nose. Oh, please come back, Rat. Do catch up, Mole. Now look here, Mole. Why, whatever is the matter, old friend? We really ought to step it out, you know. You don't understand, Ratty. It's my home, my old home. It's very close here. It's only a shabby, dingy little place, but it was my own little home and I was fond of it. And I went away and left it and... Come, oh, come. And just now I scented it and... Oh, just stop and I, I thought my heart would break. There, there, there. What a pig I've been. Just a pig. A plain pig. Come on, Mole. Where, where to? To find that home of yours. With that nose of yours. Ooh. Why ever did I do it? Why did I bring you to my poor, cold little place on a night like this? You might have been at Riverbank toasting your toes with all your own nice things about you. Hmm. Most remarkable. Wonderful. Why did I do it? Let's see inside. Oh, rat. What a neglected, cheerless place to bring you to. Moly, how can you possibly say it's cheerless? You have a... Capital little place here. So uh, compact and snug. Oh, 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 where do you keep the opener? It's all lovely. You really think so? In that drawer. Glasses on that shelf. They belong to my granddad. Everything you need. What a beautiful bedspread. Oh, Aunt Emily made me that. 
light, warmth, love. Uh, oh. If you say so, Ratty, then I couldn't be more pleased. And oh, Ratty, you are most, most welcome. And so comfortable and at ease in his own home, Mole entertained his loyal friend. What did it matter if he could not provide bread or butter? Or, as Ratty said with a sly grin, pâté or champagne. In the company of a good friend, the plainest of meals is a banquet. And what if Mole had always had to live a somewhat frugal and solitary life? There always came that time of the year, in deepest, darkest winter, when with the best of good cheer, he celebrated so much that had been good during the 12 months gone by. A time not only for looking back, but for looking forward. For looking forward yet again to the rebirth of the world, out of the dying remnants of the old year, in the spring. Be a good chap, Mole, and see who it is. Ratty, Ratty, it's Mr. Badger. Well then? It's Mr. Badger. Well then? Who? 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 Oh, yes. Mr. Badger. <coughs> the hour has come. Uh, what hour, Badger? Not what hour. <coughs> Whose hour? Toad's hour, of course. The hour of Toad. I said I would take him in hand as soon as winter was over. Very well. His time has come. Yes, hooray, I remember. <clears throat> We're going to teach him to be a sensible Toad. This very morning, I happen to know that yet another new and exceptionally powerful motor car will arrive at Toad Hall on approval or return. We must act at once. You two animals will accompany me there instantly. The work of rescue shall be accomplished. Hello, you fellows! You're just in time! Just in time, I say, for a Restrain him! Uh, Grab him, Molly! What are you doing? I say, let's go! Come on, Toad! Let go of me! This is an Back outfit. inside! I shall not go inside! I'm going for a drive! You won't be wanted today. Mr. Toad has changed his mind. No! No, Badger! I demand an instant explanation. I haven't changed my mind. Let go at once! Rat Mole, don't listen to This him. car is not required, my man. No! That is no. final. Call the police! They've all gone mad! Start the engine! I'm coming with you! Come on, Mole. Oh, quickly! Mole. Just keep still! Get out! Get him out of the way, that goes. Come on, oh, oh, my car! Beautiful car! Badger, what have you done? Now, now take those ridiculous things off. Shut! Shut, shut, shut! Take them off! Oh, 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 you knew it must come to this sooner or later, Don't. Toad. You've taken no notice of warnings. You've been throwing away your money, getting us animals a bad name with your furious driving. I wanted to say you're sorry and to promise... Oh, no good. He'll say anything. ...to promise solemnly that you'll give up your motor cars entirely and uh, forever. You're so eloquent, dear Badger, and so moving and so convincing... I faithfully promise that the next time I see a motor car, I'll find you in it! Poop, poop. Quick, Molly, lock him up! No, stop it! No, no, let go of me! I will not have this! Ow! I'm not coming up there! It's I for your not. own good, Toad. Don't pay for this, Ratty! Let go! No more trouble let with go, the police! Just until you've got this fever out of your system. Badger will know what to do.
It's going to be a tedious business. I've never seen Toad so determined. However, we shall see it out. He must never be left an instant unguarded. We shall have to take it in turns to be with him till the poison has worked itself out. Divide the day between us? I'll go first. Excellent, Mole. Let's see now. It's... It's... It, it's Toad! How the dickens did... Why, that unrepentant... <laughs> <laughs> Brain against brute force. <laughs> Toad! Toad, return at once! <gasps> Come on, you fool! Come on! Come back, you trickster! Get out of the way! <laughs> oh joy! Oh ecstasy! Clear the way! Open road! <laughs> I say, that's my motor! Come back here, Tony! Villain! Scoundrel! I'll have the law on you! To my mind. The only difficulty that presents itself in this otherwise very clear case is how we can possibly make it sufficiently hot for the incorrigible rogue and hardened ruffian whom we see cowering in the dock before us. <laughs> uh. Let me see. He has been found guilty, first, of stealing a very valuable motor car, second, of driving to the public danger, and third, of the most gross impertinence to the police. Mr. Clark, will you tell us, please, what is the very stiffest penalty we can impose for each of these offences? Without, of course, giving the prisoner the benefit of any doubt. <laughs> because, of course... <coughs> There is none. Oh. Some people would consider that stealing the motor car was the worst offence. I, 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 but cheeking the police uh, should carry the severest penalty. Oh, oh, oh. Say, 12 months for the theft, oh, which is mild. Three years for the furious driving, which is lenient. And as for the cheek, which, as we have heard, was pretty bad, let us say, um... Fifteen years. No. Making a grand total of nineteen years. Capital. <laughs> Call it twenty to be on the safe side. And if you ever appear before us again, we shall have to deal with you much more seriously. <laughs> slice of bread tomorrow morning. Yes, Father. <laughs> the very end of everything for Toad. For the popular and handsome Toad. For the rich and hospitable Toad. How can I hope ever to be set free? Toad! Uh, how I pity me. <laughs> <laughs> They'll all forget me. Wise old badger. <laughs> Clever, intelligent rat. 
sensible mole. <laughs> it really is. The end. The utter, bitter end. You know. So. Languish day and night. <laughs> night and day in this dungeon. Till people who were proud to say they knew me have forgotten the very name of Toad. <laughs> and imprisoned so justly. Stupid animal that I was for stealing so handsome a motor car in such an audacious manner. And for such lurid and imaginative cheek. <laughs> bestowed on so many fat, red-faced policemen. <laughs> oh, unhappy and forsaken Toad, cast into a cold, uncomfortable cell after the glories of Toad Hall. Who now shall enjoy that desirable riverside residence dating in part from the 14th century, but with all modern conveniences, five minutes from post office and golf club, boathouse, walled garden, pigsty, stables, pigeon house, hen house, dairy, wash house, china and linen cupboards, <laughs> and the great banqueting hall. <laughs> in which the wealthy and the generous toad so royally entertained his guests with all that was best to eat. Good morning, Mr. Toad. Yes, yes, good morning. Now, Mr. Toad, I've been a thinking. Seeing as how fond I am of animals, and seeing as how I do feel pity for you, mm -hmm. and seeing as how you are rich... Very rich, Miguel. <laughs> very rich. And seeing as you wouldn't miss a pound or two... Well, see, I have an aunt who's a washerwoman. <laughs> well, never mind. Think no more about it. I have several aunts who ought to be washerwomen. <laughs> do be quiet. You do hurt my head. It's my aunt as does the washing for the prisoners, see? Because my father, the jailer, do like to keep any pay in business in the family. Now, my aunt is very poor. And if you, Mr. Toad, don't want to stay here for 20 years and would come to an arrangement... To be free? When her comes directly, her could just slip her clothes off. Uh -huh. You could put her on yeah. and everything will be all right, you see, because we could get it out. Hello, old friend. Had a nice day. Phew. Hasn't it been hot? Hmm. Been on the river with some pals. How was your supper with the otters? Something's the matter. Out with it. I've been worrying about Toad. He's wondering how he'll stick being in prison. <laughs> Never mind Toad. He always falls on his feet. <laughs> Ratty, how could you? Save your concern for the otters. Young Portley's been missing for several days. He's strayed before, but never for so long. And the river's swollen. And the lad's no great swimmer yet. The weir, suppose... Quite. His father's frantic. He's going to keep watch all night by the ford. It's where he caught his first fish, you see. Hey, don't you fight. 
Nippers are waiting for you, dare say. Oh, yes, any amount of them. Oh, oh dear. Oh, dear. I'll tell you what. You wash a few shirts for me, I'll give you a ride. Oh, yes, yes. A thousand shirts. Up with you then. Bamboozle the prison guards with what subtle arts of persuasion you wrung the heart of this clod of a train driver. Why, you're probably the greatest actor in England. And you're once again free, my dear fellow. Free! Is a rum go, washerwoman? <gasps> Hello, is how I <gasps> didn't order stop. No! I will confess. I am not a poor washerwoman, but rather the famous Mr. Toad. I've just escaped from a loathsome jail, and if they recapture me, it will be chains and misery once again for poor, innocent me. Innocent? What were you in prison for? Only borrowing a car. Mm. I ought by rights to turn oh, you in, no. but I don't hold with being ordered about by policemen when I'm on my own engine. Here's the tunnel I come in. Oh. You must jump oh. just before. Right? Yes. Are you ready now? Oh, jump! Oh, jump! So Toad was safe for the moment, but what of little Portly? Missed, looked for, not yet found, and leaving no clues to help the searchers. Ah, oh, Ratty, dear old Ratty, who was so wise in the ways of the river, was following an instinct of his own. Something there was in the air. Some spirit bore him on. Haunting, awesome. And once he heard its voice, he had no option but to follow. Sometimes the beauty of it hurt him. It would come and go. Fainter now and then stronger. Which was nowhere and yet everywhere at once. A merry bubble and joy. Else a thin, clear, happy call that he had once heard at its loudest and strongest at the place of what he called his song dream, a holy place where, if anywhere at all, that spirit might be found. Ratty, are you afraid of him? Never. Never. Some great creature has been here. Here he is, Ratty. <laughs> oh, now we must get you back to your father, young Portly. Come along, Rat. Think of poor Otter waiting by the ford. Uh, you scoundrel! Where did you get to? Do you know I've had no sleep for two nights because of you? I'm so tired, Rat. Are you? Dead tired. Something very splendid and beautiful has happened, though. Hark to the wind in the reeds. Mm, like faraway music. Music, yes, but, but words, too. I can't hear any words. Lest the oar should dwell and turn your frolic to fret, you shall look upon my power at the helping hour, but then you shall forget. 
Can't you hear those words in the reeds, Mole? No, Ratia. I'm sorry, I just can't. Helper and healer I cheer, small waifs in the woodland wet. Strays I find in it, wounds I bind in it, bidding them all forget. I shan't forget Mr. Toad, not ever. I dare say it. Uh, <clears throat> I dare say it is to them, as isn't a poor washerwoman as needs to wear her poor old feet out to visit her daughter as lives near Toad Hall. Toad Hall? Canal joins the river near there. I'll give you a lift. Oh, thank you, ma'am, indeed. It's the charm that does it, Toad, me old lad. Pure charm. Washerwoman, you says, Missus. <laughs> Laundry lady, I should have said. I run a very high class business. Oh, my idiot. I'm in hot water again. Oh, never mind. Poo, I say. Any fool can wash. Now then, uh, you put these things uh, in here and uh, well, you just rub a bit of soap on like this. And whoop! Oh, come here, little beast. Then uh, you're, uh, you're supposed to do something with this. Uh, uh, like that, I think. And, uh, uh, oh, I'll get back in there, will you? So will I never? Oh, <laughs> you it. And, and, uh, yeah, and, and what I'll say is, washing should be left to fools. How dare you mock me, you common, low, fat barge woman? Here! You to be calling me names. I'll have you know that I am in reality the very well-known, highly respected and distinguished Toad. <laughs> so there. What? A nasty, creepy, crawly Toad? On my lovely, clean barge? Yeah. Get off your power. Gotcha. Good Let go, Eye in your face, washerwoman! And you'll pass for a fair-looking toad. But I'll pay you out! Oh, yes! <laughs> Here, horsey. Come to toad. Stop! 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 Oh, you Dobbin. You! You clumsy! You nasty! You oh, oh, oh. The world has held great heroes, as history books have shown, but never a name to go into fame, compared with that of Toad. Aha! Toad shall arrive home in style. <gasps> oh, no! Oh, no! no, no, no. Oh, oh, prison and oh, chains the game, oh, you, hapless no, Toad. toad. <laughs> Oh, poor old washerwoman. Overcome by the heat, I dare say. Uh, uh. Why, she looks better already. How do you feel now, Mum? Uh, a great deal better, sir. Thank you kindly. Except, sir, I was, I was just thinking. Yes? <laughs> I've never been in a motor car before. How do they work, I wonder? I'll be more than glad to show you, uh, but I fear it's a rather complicated business for an old lady to understand. Uh, 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 what a woman is! Uh, 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 I am not other than the famous two! Motor car snatcher and prison breaker! Uh, grab him! Stop it! Sit still and you shall know what driving me is! Meryl, for you are in the hands of the famous, skillful, entirely fearless two! <laughs> the bobbies! Ha! Catch me if you can! Stop! <laughs> He's going away! 
Oh, 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 poor Toad. Oh. Hold fast, oh. madam. Hold fast. Oh, kind sir. Help me, poor wretch that I am. Toad? Toad? You simply won't believe what I have to tell you, my dear fellows. With one pound, I was free from prison. Took a short cruise on a luxury ship. Took up my old interest in motor cars once again. <laughs> oh, God, it is lovely to have you back. Just wait till I tell you my last exploit. <laughs> now, I... see here, Toad. We don't want to give you pain after all no, you've No, we been... don't. Hooray for old Toad. However did you do it, you clever, intelligent... <laughs> but it's like this. As soon as you'd got into your scrape, we river bankers... Who all stuck up for you. Be quiet, Molly. We decided to keep an eye on Toad Hall for you. Keep it aired and dusty. Very civil of you. And so Badger and Mole here moved in with some of their things. But the Wild Wooders came and surprised us with a raiding party. Weasels armed to the teeth and stoats and ferrets and... And beat and... the living daylights out of the two of them with sticks and threw them out. <laughs> and they say they're staying in Toad oh. Hall for good. Ah, huh? Eating your grub, drinking your drink. What? And making up rude songs and jokes about you. Ugh. What? We will jolly soon see about that. It's no use. Armed sentries everywhere. Ferret on the gate with a rifle, stoats on the roof with rocks. I know. I'll dry out Toad's washerwoman clothes and put them on and go up to Toad Hall and ask them if they want any washing done. And they'll say, run away, old woman. And I'll say, won't be me running away before long, because there's a great army of badgers and rats and moles coming up through the paddock tonight, armed to the teeth, not to mention the death or glory toads. And oh my, won't that get them flustered. A great army. <laughs> Poor frivolous animal. Good day to you, toad. <gasps> oh. Unhappy creature. <laughs> I have high hopes of you, mole. <laughs> tonight... They're having a banquet for the chief weasel. If the good mole's washerwoman ruse works, the stoats and ferrets would be mainly posted sentinel in the paddock, and not best pleased with the weasels, who will all be eating and drinking in the dining hall. None of them armed, and little suspecting how we shall overpower them. <laughs> Pooh! Only four of us? And we'd be seen? My young friend, your father, who was a worthier animal than some, told me things he'd never have dreamt of telling you. Huh? There's a secret underground passage, what? which leads right up under your butler's pantry. That squeaky board. That's it then, Badger. <laughs> Mole, you're the best of fellows. You and old Ratty go outside and send those ferrets and stoats about their business <laughs> while I have a word with Toad. <laughs> no, by Jove, Badger. Did you see how I sent that chief weasel flying? <laughs> Sit down, Toad. Shortly, you will attend to our immediate needs. And tomorrow, you will give a splendid banquet to celebrate this affair. Of course! And it'll be the finest... You will immediately make out a guest list and then write invitations to all our friends. It's all over. Threw down their rifles and fled. 
Not all of them. Some stood fast for a bit, and there were stoats fighting with weasels, and there was wrestling and uh, wriggling uh, and... Excellent and deserving animal. How's that guest list coming on for our feast tomorrow? Oh, bother the guest list! Here's the programme of entertainment. We'll open with a speech by Toad. There'll be other speeches by him later in the evening, of course. Then an address by Toad about uh, the prison system, uh, canals, horse dealing, etc. Followed by a song from uh, Toad and other pieces performed by uh, the composer, Toad. Uh, well, I say, not one speech tomorrow? N -n not one t t song? Not one song? Huh. Whose own coming is it, I'd like to know. When the toad came home. When the toad came home. There was smashing in the window and crashing in the door. There was chivvying the weasels that fainted on the floor when the toad came home. Bang go the drums, the trumpeters are tooting, and the soldiers are saluting. Cannon they are shooting, and the motor cars are hooting. Poop, poop. <laughs> Don't want my songs, eh? Well, it's entirely their loss, of course. Oh, poor fellows. Hey-ho. Shout, hooray. Let each one of the crowd try and shout it very loud in honour of an animal of whom you're very proud. For it's Toad's great All the animals cheered when he entered and crowded round to praise his great courage and cleverness. But Toad only smiled faintly and murmured, Oh, not at all. Badger was the mastermind and Mole and Water Rat bore the brunt of the fighting. I merely served in the ranks and did little or nothing. So, <laughs> so, so, he was, was indeed, indeed an altered toad. toad. <laughs> <laughs> There, we wanted to board. Come along, all the hands to the packing. I want to hear some more. Is that the end? Not quite. At Badger's command, Toad sent presents or money to the jailer's daughter and the engine drivers. And the bargewoman. And the bargewoman. <laughs> Sometimes, on long summer evenings, four friends would take a stroll together in the wild wood. Mother weasels would bring their young ones to the mouths of their holes and say, Look, there's the great Mr. Toad, and that's the gallant water rat, and yonder's the famous Mr. Mole. Whenever their children were naughty, they would be told they didn't behave, the terrible grey badger would up and get them. Oh, but this was very unfair on Badger. Because he was rather fond of children. And so am I. I dare say Rat is out with the others, messing about in boats. Gosh, yes. We might even see them. The very next time this happens, I shall be exceedingly angry. Bother. Oh, blow. Thanks, spring cleaning. I'm not always talking about my old river. But I think about it all the time. Been in prison? I got out, of course. Thrown into a canal, swam ashore, stole a horse. 
I'm such a clever toad. It wasn't on such fun. What adventures did they have next?